Number 10. The Sewer Cobra The King Cobra is one of the biggest and most venomous snakes in the entire world. They have venom so potent that they can kill a person within just 30 minutes of biting them. Not only that, but the venom delivered by the fangs of a King Cobra is so toxic, it has the strength to kill at least 20 men. A King Cobra was recently pulled out of a sewer in southern Thailand, and it was so big, it's hard to believe it's even real. King Cobras can be found throughout many parts of India and Southeast Asia, and in Thailand, they can be pretty common in rural areas. This particular giant was found slithering through the open sewer near a small residential district. Animal rescue workers had to be called in to take the cobra away and release it somewhere in the wild. They hadn't expected the cobra to be almost 15 feet long. It turned out to be the largest cobra the team had ever tried to wrangle, and one of the biggest cobras ever captured by human hands. To give you an idea of just how big a king cobra is on average, they're typically around 10 feet long. It's not unusual for them to grow to 13 feet, but any longer than that is considered a giant. The maximum length is about 18 feet, but that rarely occurs. In the case of this Thai super serpent, the residential district it was found in had apparently been built over top of a once pristine jungle, and that jungle had been full of cobras. After the development, many of the remaining snakes stuck around to live in the sewers. Number 9. The Biggest Eel There could be a giant eel bigger than any other eel in the world, and it could possibly be living in Loch Ness, Scotland. I'm talking about the Loch Ness Monster. According to the archaeological news network, the famous Nessie could actually be a giant eel. Thanks to a study done by Professor Neil Gamel, a geneticist working with the University of Otago in New Zealand, it turns out the sightings of Nessie that had been going on for the last few centuries could be caused by a large creature living beneath the murky surface of the loch. However, there's no solid evidence that a monster from a prehistoric era is living in the body of water. Loch Ness has been studied extensively and investigated for environmental DNA. Scientists have found no DNA belonging to a shark, a catfish, a sturgeon, or any kind of prehistoric beast. But here's what scientists did find. With almost every sample taken from the loch, they discovered DNA from an eel. Nobody knows what kind of eel or how big it could be, or even how long it's been alive. Out of 250 samples of water taken from different parts of the loch, all at different depths, eel DNA appeared in just about every one. It's clear there's either one very large eel or even quite a few living in Loch Ness, and it would actually fit perfectly to the descriptions of the Loch Ness monster. Slithery creature with a long neck around 13 feet in length. It would make sense why witnesses always see the monster slithering along the surface of the water like some kind of sea snake. And it would explain why the monster is so hard to find. If Nessie really is an eel, she'd be living in darkness, probably at the very bottom of the loch. Number 8. The Biggest Fox The biggest fox in British history was discovered, captured, and then swiftly murdered. Here's the story. The fox was busted eating a rural family's cat, so the family set out some traps, baited them with food, and waited. But what the family didn't expect was for the fox to be just about twice the normal size of any other fox found in Britain. The giant monster weighed about 26 and a half pounds, which may not sound like much, but is actually quite significant for a little fox. It was about four feet in length and as tall as a coyote. For anyone who doesn't know the wild canine hierarchy, fox is at the bottom. Coyote is usually in the middle and then wolf is on the top. This fox somehow grew double its average size springing its way up the food chain and becoming a local apex predator. Unfortunately for the giant fox, the family was still pretty upset that it ate their cat. The guy who actually used the traps to catch the fox was a veterinarian, so at least he murdered the giant fox in the most humane way possible, and by that I mean he filled it full of drugs and made it go to sleep. Number 7. The Biggest Dinosaur in Japan on the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido, paleontologists have unearthed the largest dinosaur skeleton ever found in the country. The complete skeleton of an incredible dinosaur that dates back almost 72 million years was uncovered from a marine deposit. What kind of dinosaur was it, you ask? It was a type of duck-billed dino. These dinosaurs are also known as Hadrosuridae. They were widely distributed herbivores during the late Cretaceous, which ended with a familiar asteroid 66 million years before today. According to the research team from Hokkaido University, the dinosaur was 24 feet long. It was a literal monster. There are actually two types of duck-billed dinosaur, those with crests and those without. 
This one didn't have a crest, meaning it didn't have the weird bone thing sticking up out the top of its head. Skeletons of duck-billed dinosaurs have been found previously in Japan, but to date, this is the biggest one. Number 6. The Biggest Elephant One of the largest recorded land animals in human history was a great African elephant shot to death in 2017. His name was Sato II, named after a different giant elephant that was killed by poachers in 2014. This elephant was known as a tusker because his tusks were so big that they nearly dragged across the ground. The elephant was 50 years old and the last giant of its kind to walk our planet. According to conservationists, he was killed in a poaching incident after being shot with over 40 poison arrows. He was found dead near the Kenyan Wildlife Refuge of Savo National Park, though evidently it's not much of a refuge. The BBC says there are fewer than 30 African tuskers left in the wild today. This means there are less than 30 African adult bulls with large ivory tusks. The death of Sato II was terribly tragic, especially since locals who were familiar with the elephant said it had a great personality. He was approachable, easy to find, and always up for saying hello. Over the past 50 years, Sato II had survived droughts, other poaching attempts, and plenty of hardships as the world changed. In the end, the poaching attempt was all for nothing. The poachers didn't even get away with the ivory tusks. They were found by officers with the Kenyan Wildlife Service. The gang of poachers was also captured and arrested, discovered with bows and poison arrows and an AK-47 rifle. And just to give you an idea of how huge Sato II was, one of his tusks weighed a whopping 113 and a half pounds. Hey, real quick, if you're new to checking out World List, welcome. Thanks for checking out the channel. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. The Ancient Giant Fish The largest extinct fish currently on record is the lead Sichthys problematicus. I know it's not a very good name for a fish, but it's the largest one ever recorded and it lived 165 million years ago in both Europe and South America. And you kinda won't believe how huge this ancient fish was. To set up some examples so you can be even more shocked, this extinct fish was a type of bony fish, which today make up 95% of all living fish species. The heaviest bone fish alive right now is the ocean sunfish, which weighs two and a half tons. The fish from our prehistoric past weighed an outstanding 49 tons. That makes it heavier than a whale shark, one of the biggest cartilaginous fish in the world, which only weighs around 37.4 tons. It was a giant and a fantastic predator. Scientists believe the giant fish could move at speeds of up to 11 miles per hour. And it's pretty impressive considering the fastest fish today only goes about double that. What scientists don't understand is why there are no giant bony fish living today. The environment is kind of perfect for them to thrive in, and yet throughout the last few millions of years, they've continued shrinking, getting smaller and smaller. Number 4. The Lolong Crocodile The largest captive crocodile was named Lolong, and he was formally declared the biggest in the world by Guinness World Records in 2012 before dying the year after. His capture back in 2011 in the Philippines was amazing. Lolong was initially blamed for the death of at least one person in the small town of Bunawan prompting a search that lasted for over three weeks and involved dozens of hunters. When the huge and angry reptile was finally tracked down and captured, it was measured at being 21 feet long, tipping the scales in an incredible 2,370 pounds. Everyone was so impressed with the preposterous size of Lolong the crocodile that instead of killing him, they put him on display at a local ecotourism park. But Lolong's fame didn't last long. He flipped on his back, bloated and sick, and died a few hours later. This happened because apparently Lolong didn't like being stuck in a cage. He stopped eating and he gradually got sicker. And the unseasonably cold weather in the Philippines was the final nail in the coffin that put him out of commission. It's not clear what happened to his body, but he probably made one incredibly swanky pair of crocodile boots. Number 3. The Common Ostrich The ostrich is the biggest bird in the world. Ostriches are fascinating creatures with a rich evolutionary history. The massive bird has three stomachs. Pretty weird, but pretty cool too. Ostriches are able to run faster than any animal with two legs on our planet. An ostrich can sprint at a blistering speed of 43 miles per hour. And this is because they have just two toes on each foot, whereas other birds have four. It's more like they have hooves, really, though, with their powerful legs that can really hoof it. These things run faster than a lot of cars can drive. What's weird about the ostrich is that it can't use its wings to fly. It's a flightless bird. 
The wings of an ostrich have a span of about six feet and are primarily used to impress other ostriches. They also work to conserve heat and let the ostrich change direction while running like a boat's rudder. The coolest thing about the common ostrich, though, is its eggs. There's a whole social structure that revolves around the eggs. First of all, a single ostrich egg weighs as much as 24 chicken eggs. Secondly, every female ostrich can recognize her own eggs, even when in a group of other eggs. When it comes time to lay the eggs, all the females in a group put their eggs in the same basket, that of the dominant ostrich. The dominant female then works with her favorite male to incubate the eggs for 45 days. Number 2. The Giant Barrel Sponge Giant Barrel Sponge is one of the weirdest animals you've never heard of. This bizarre creature lives in coral and rocky reefs, and yes, it looks just like a rock. At first glance, you might think this was some kind of clay bowl someone dropped into the ocean after a pottery class, but it's actually a living sponge found throughout the Caribbean. It's also the biggest sponge ever found, measuring six feet across. And other animals live in it too, like crabs, fish, shrimp, and other little critters. But unlike most animals we've talked about today, the giant barrel sponge isn't able to move. It's stuck to the surface of the reef and stays there for its whole life. How long is the life of a giant barrel sponge? According to Oceana, the giant sponge can live for over 2,000 years. Because humans haven't really been keeping track of our marine friends for that long, nobody actually knows how old these things can get. But they do date back 500 million years, making the sponge one of the oldest and most primal types of animals on the planet. They may be boring and immobile, but they're old. And by their own terms, gigantic. Number 1. The Biggest Anaconda when Colonel Percy Fawcett from Northern Ireland went on an expedition into the Amazon jungle in 1906, he claimed to witness a giant anaconda, a totally new breed of anaconda previously unknown to science. He said the animal was absolutely massive, around 60 feet in length. This seems preposterous, but that's what the explorer said. He'd been charged with mapping the Peruvian Amazon and had no reason to make up such a crazy story. And then just a few years later, in 1925, Fawcett himself actually vanished in the jungle. Many people believe he was eaten by the giant snake. But was he really? Is there actually a monster snake living in the Amazon jungle over 60 feet long? The answer is probably not, even though there are rumors even among the Amazonian tribes of something called the Yakumama, or the Black Boa, a beastly serpent so large it can eat a whole village. They're probably a legend. The largest snake ever was a prehistoric monster called the Titanoboa, which only grew to be 40 feet maximum, and it went extinct hundreds of thousands of years ago. So the chances of a 60-foot snake being around in the 20th century are pretty low. The pointy-nosed blue chimera is a bizarre species of deep fish that is not often caught on the end of an angler's line. And yet it does happen occasionally. Fishermen from Minnesota recently got lucky and caught one of these rare fish off the coast of Cabo in Mexico. It's such a weird and unique catch that the fishermen took it back to shore and donated it to the local scientists for research. But just what exactly is the blue chimera? It's a type of ghost shark that branched apart from normal sharks about 400 million years ago. It lives in the deepest parts of the ocean, and there are several different species. The pointy-nosed chimera was only named back in 2002. The creature has a body built of plates and hardened pieces of cartilage. And even though it's such a creepy and rarely caught animal, chimeras are actually really common. The only thing is that they live around 4,000 feet deep in a part of the ocean too deep to fish in. Number 9. Living Fossil Fish Scientists have made some pretty strange discoveries recently regarding the colacanth, which is a giant fish considered to be a living fossil. This fish has been living in our oceans for 400 million years. Scientists believe they were extinct until a living specimen was captured in 1938 off South Africa. Since then, a few fishermen have reeled in colacanths, although it's still considered to be one of the rarest catches possible. The fish is also extremely endangered, so scientists are only allowed to study specimens already captured and already deceased. As you can imagine, it's been difficult to study the colacanth given the limitations and scarcity of the fish. Scientists originally believed the colacanth lived for only about 20 years. However, scientists from France's Marine Research Institute recently studied a captured colacanth specimen and discovered it to be 84 years old. Now they believe the fish can live up to a century. It turns out the colacanth doesn't reach its sexual maturity until it's 50 years old. It'd be like you hitting puberty at the age of 49. And even more shocking is that the colacanth stays pregnant for five years. 
They have a totally bizarre aging pattern and reproductive system, and scientists really want to catch more of these fascinating fish to get to the bottom of their weird characteristics. Number 8. Mysterious Orbs Let's take a break from the ocean for a second to check out something strange caught on a homeowner's security camera in Maryland. The homeowner's name is Rhonda, and she was quite shocked to discover a row of brightly lit orbs floating across her backyard. In the security footage, Rhonda saw six distinct orbs of light moving across the frame. She couldn't really say what the mysterious balls of light were, but she knew they were way out of the ordinary. Rhonda had installed her security system some time ago and was used to catching random animals prowling through the backyard, but she'd never seen suspicious alien-like bulbs of light before. Rhonda sent the security footage to Fox News after seeing how they had covered similar orbs caught on other homeowners' cameras in Florida. There has been no explanation as to what the orbs were in either case, and we don't know if the two incidents were related. We do know it wasn't a glitch in the camera, because it never happened before and then it never happened again. Could it be aliens, a mysterious animal, or something even stranger? Nobody knows the truth. So what do you think of these strange, mysterious balls of light? What do you think they mean? Could they really be something otherworldly? Or do you think it's just a coincidence? Let us know in the comments section down below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 7. The Kraken Caught After centuries of trying to track down the mythical Kraken, scientists finally did it. They found the beast near Japan and actually managed to capture it on video. It wasn't exactly the Kraken from legend, though. It wasn't 100 feet long or anything like that. Instead, it was just an ordinary giant squid. But it was the biggest squid in the entire world and probably the true origin of the Kraken myth. In real life, this living sea monster can grow to be around 46 feet long. That's roughly the length of a trailer. But even though the giant squid is so incredibly huge, it's surprisingly elusive. Almost nobody has ever caught a giant squid, and when they have, it's either been dead dying, a baby, or a juvenile stuck in a deep sea trawling net. Now we go back to Japan, where a team of marine scientists caught the Kraken on film for the first time in 2012. It was located and filmed 2,000 feet beneath the surface, just south of Japan. It was a huge breakthrough for marine scientists everywhere and got everyone really excited. But an even bigger breakthrough came a couple years ago in 2019 when researchers were finally able to catch it on video again in the Gulf of Mexico. They discovered the reason for the giant squid being so elusive. Based on the latest sighting, scientists determined that its eyeballs are so big and so well adapted to living in the pitch black of the deep ocean that they can actually see underwater researchers coming in their submersible vehicles and then they just run away. The bigger the squid, the bigger their eyes. And so they'll probably never be seen since they can spot the camera coming from miles away. I guess they're really shy. Researchers are still trying to figure out ways to trick the Kraken out of hiding to further study it. They have this strategy of combining low-light equipment with bioluminescent bait, which seems to be a pretty effective method of getting the giant squid out of its hiding places. That's a handy ploy. And there's so much to study about the Kraken's behavior that can only come to light in the darkness of its natural habitat. Number 6. A Mysterious Moth Believe it or not, there's a tiny insect even more elusive and mysterious than the giant squid. It's called the long-toothed dart moth, and it was first discovered and named in 1890. But after that, it was never seen again. It'd be another 130 years before someone captured the first living specimen. Photographer Joel Satori is the one who caught the moth on film recently in 2020. According to National Geographic, Joel was on a mission to photograph every species of animal living in zoos and wildlife sanctuaries everywhere in the world. This rare moth was the 11,000th image Joel added to his photo arc. He found the moth along the Picos River in New Mexico and took a picture of it. At the time, he didn't actually know what it was. It was a mysterious species, so he sent it to a bug expert who could identify it. As it turned out, bug experts have been waiting 130 years for a picture of the mysterious moth. It's actually a type of cutworm, a kind of caterpillar that emerges from the soil only at night and it's rarely seen. When they turn into moths, they also come out only after dark and pollinate night-blooming flowers. Number 5. Monster Grouper In South Carolina, a fisherman made a rather impressive catch after reeling in a rare species of fish that was recently on the brink of extinction. The group went out fishing on a Thursday morning in Beaufort County and quickly caught a goliath grouper that weighed over 400 pounds. According to Newsweek, it was the first of its kind to ever be caught in the county. The captain of the fishing vessel described the grouper as a catch you wait your whole life for. 
But just how hard is it to pull a Goliath grouper into your boat? The answer is pretty darn hard. It took over an hour just to get the fish in the boat, and it was a struggle the whole time. At first, the fishermen thought they had a monster shark on the end of their line. It fought so fiercely nobody could believe it was a fish. Then after an hour, when they finally saw it thrashing at the surface of the water, they were in complete shock. People started shouting, it's a Goliath, it's a Goliath. The fish was easily identifiable by its yellowish skin and unique jaw. Even though the grouper weighed 400 pounds, it was just a baby. The average Goliath grouper actually weighs around 800 pounds and can grow to be over 8 feet long. And groupers are not native to the South Carolina county they were found in. They usually prefer shallow tropical waters around the Florida Keys and Bahamas, the Gulf of Mexico, and a lot of the coasts in Brazil and the Caribbean. Number 4. Monkey Cannibals In Costa Rica, scientists have been studying a group of white-faced capuchin monkeys for the last 37 years. In all those years, the monkeys were never witnessed participating in the disturbing act of cannibalism. And yet on April 9th of 2019, a group of scientists caught the monkeys red-handed, eating one of their own in a very rare and quite disgusting event. It happened when a young baby capuchin died. This does occur from time to time and isn't actually all that strange. The weird part came after, when the baby monkey's relatives gathered around its corpse and began to eat it. It was pretty horrible and scientists couldn't believe what they were watching. Most capuchin monkeys only eat plants and the occasional small animal like a bird or a lizard. Even stranger is that only two of the monkeys actually participated in the eating, and they refrained from eating the baby monkey's head. Usually when an animal catches its prey, it'll begin by biting its face, thus quickly silencing the animal. This is suggested to researchers that cannibalism could be part of some kind of primitive monkey ritual. Number 3. 2,000 Dogs a Chinese millionaire recently captured 2,000 dogs, and he didn't run around catching them with a giant dog net. Instead, he used his immense fortune to purchase stray dogs before they could be sent to the slaughterhouse to be euthanized. And now he spends all his time caring for his huge collection of beloved canine friends. How incredible is that? This is probably the most heartwarming story anyone has ever heard recently. Wang Yan got the idea to save all the stray dogs after his own cherished puppy died three years prior. He's actually in charge of a steel empire and is worth millions of dollars. But he puts a huge amount of his own time and a large portion of his own funds into caring for his thousands of animals and helping them find new homes. This just goes to show that even a millionaire that may seem like they have better things to do if they want to can make a significant difference in the world. After all, this guy literally saved the lives of thousands of dogs, at least 10,000 of them to date, and it only cost him a small bit of time and a small chunk of his huge fortune. Number 2. Loch Ness Monster Once again, the Loch Ness Monster has been caught on camera. A 54-year-old woman named Karen Scott was taking pictures of Loch Ness while visiting the nearby city of Aberdeen during the coronavirus pandemic. She was simply enjoying her day and taking in the beautiful sights. What she hadn't expected was to actually catch the monster itself in her photographs. The unidentified creature seen in Karen's pictures has been labeled a positive Nessie sighting by the local register. But unfortunately, the picture is still pretty blurry. It was taken from quite a distance away. It really could be anything, even just a bird sitting on the water. However, Karen says she watched the beast rise and then sink and swim away, suggesting it really could have been some kind of creature. She also said it was the size of a large seal. Since there aren't many seals hanging out on the lock, all signs point to the Loch Ness Monster, or of course, a floating tree branch. So do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? Let me know down below. Number 1. Colorful Lobsters Very strange lobsters were caught during the lobster fishing season in PEI in 2021. Normally, lobsters captured off the coast of this small Canadian province are the same color. They're usually a brownish-red color, you know, like any ordinary lobster you've seen at a grocery store. But this year, there must have been something in the water. Fishermen were pulling up blue lobsters, jet black lobsters, and even hybrid lobsters that were half orange and half black, like the two-face of the lobster world. But why have there been so many colorful lobsters found just now? Why weren't they there before? According to lobster biologist Robert McMillan, this has to do with genetics and diet. Lobsters inherit their color from their parents just like most other species. Lobsters also get a lot of their color from the pigment in their food, which combines with proteins to create the color we see on their shells. The reason so many oddly colored lobsters have been turning up is because they've basically mutated. The lobsters with weird colors have mutated in such a way that their proteins are different, producing a wide variety of color. But why? 
Well, nobody's really sure about that part. So what about you? Do you have any ideas? A forest ranger tried to take a selfie with a python, and it didn't really work the way he had planned. He was nearly strangled to death while trying to pose for a picture with the wild animal. It all happened while Sanjay Duda was called to a small village in West Bengal to take care of a massive Indian rock python that had swallowed a goat near a school. Initial estimates placed the snake at being around 30 feet long, which is actually kind of preposterous for a snake of this kind. It was more likely around 25 feet. Sanjay was able to wrangle the snake easily enough, however, instead of putting it in his snake bag, he draped the serpent around his neck to pose for a bunch of photographs. And the snake wasn't so interested in posing. Seconds after busting out his smartphone, the snake began to strangle him. It wrapped one of its coils around his neck and began to squeeze the life out of him. He was only able to get himself free because of the nearby villagers who saw he was having a bit of a hard time. They freed the snake and Sanjay walked away with his life. And as you may already know, Indian rock pythons are massive, non-venomous snakes that try to kill their prey via constriction. They normally strangle their prey to death before swallowing their victims head first. Number 9. Narrowly Escaping a Tiger a couple of forest rangers, also in India, miraculously escaped being ambushed by an angry tiger while riding their scooter through the jungle. The forest rangers just barely escaped with their lives. They were riding along the Karnataka and Kerala border and filming the scenery as they went when, out of nowhere, a tiger burst through the jungle foliage and began speeding down the path behind the riders. The guy in front hit the gas and they shot off as quick as the scooter would go. The tiger was just inches from swiping the guys off their vehicle. It was trying to get close enough to leap through the air and tackle the men into the bushes. But luckily for them, the tiger didn't prove fast enough. Because they had already been recording the scenery, they managed to get the entire incident on video and the footage is nothing short of heart-stopping. It's not clear exactly where the tiger came from. It literally came charging out of the forest as if it had been passing by and just spotted an easy meal. The men didn't stop to see what became of the huge cat, but chances are it ran back into the jungle and went to go hunting for something else. Number 8. Devil's Garden Ants In the jungle, there's a war going on between ants and plants. Believe me, it's a lot more dramatic than you may think. Biologist Deborah M. Gordon from Stanford University identified an ant species that creates its own special herbicide to poison plants it doesn't like. The identification was the result of a study that went on for four years. This was in the Amazon jungle of Peru. Researchers were focused on specific areas known as the Devil's Garden, where massive patches of vegetation have been randomly disappearing for unknown reasons. Inside the Devil's Garden, and there are a few different patches of forest that go by the same name, all of the trees are of a single species. All other trees have been wiped out. Local legends claim the patches were cultivated by an evil forest spirit. However, scientists discovered it wasn't a spirit that got rid of all the plants, it was an ant attack. As you probably already know, the rainforest is a diverse place filled with thousands and thousands of different trees and plants. But in the Devil's Garden patches, there's no diversity. It turns out a special kind of ant, called Mermilla kista shulami, poisons every plant in the area except for the ones the colony lives in using a type of formic acid which it produces naturally. Worker ants bite small holes in the leaf tissue, stuff their abdomen into the holes, then release the acid to slowly kill the plant. They do this with all the plants they don't like, until they have the perfect environment for themselves, in which a colony can live for up to 800 years in complete peace. Number 7. The Jungle Massacre One of the most brutal attacks in the history of the jungle happened to eight Western tourists in Uganda back in 1999. Four British tourists, one American couple, and two New Zealanders were ambushed while in the middle of a jungle safari. They were trekking through the windy, impenetrable forest looking for rare mountain gorillas when out of nowhere, a band of rebels armed with automatic rifles and spears emerged from the jungle and attacked. Four Ugandan park employees were slain and a group of tourists were kidnapped. The rebels were part of an ethnic Hutu group, militiamen who carried out brutal mass killings in Rwanda back in 1994. The full group of tourists counted 31, up against 150 soldiers armed to the teeth. The soldiers purposely took British and Americans and left behind the others. Many survived, but eight chosen victims weren't so lucky. The American couple who were killed had been on their honeymoon. They decided to spend the days after their marriage vacationing through Africa while well, they were hacked apart with machetes. One of the British tourists killed was Mark Lindgren, a 23-year-old graduate from Nottingham University 
on a tour of Africa before he started his career. He too was bludgeoned to death with primitive weapons and left to rot in the jungle. At the end of this horrifying day, most of the tourists managed to escape with their lives and the rebels vanished back into the woods. Not a lot of travelers went to the Ugandan jungle after this. So do you like hiking in the jungle or in a forest? Has anything weird ever happened? Did you see a bear? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one. Number 6. The Crocodile and the Tourist A British tourist visiting Sri Lanka got into a bit of trouble with a crocodile. And a crocodile has got to be the worst enemy to make while on vacation. The tourist's name was Paul McLean, a journalist only 24 years old who worked as a reporter for the Financial Times in Britain. According to Newsweek, he was on holiday taking surfing lessons. Unfortunately for Paul, surfing lessons turned to bloodshed. His corpse was found by divers about 225 miles from the capital of Colombo, in a mud lagoon near the coastal village of Panama. Official police reports say he had suffered six or seven wounds to his right leg and that his body was found stuck in the mud. The lagoon is near a popular surfing spot called Elephant Rock. Not only can tourists hit some serious waves here, they can also see elephants and crocodiles in the wild. Paul had been washing his hands in the river at the very edge of the jungle when a crocodile came out of nowhere, shot out of the water like a rocket with teeth, and then dragged the poor kid into the lagoon and bit him to death. Now let this be a lesson to anyone who goes into the jungle. If you're going to wash your hands, don't do it alone in a river known to be filled with crocodiles. Number 5. Rampaging Gorilla A group of tourists looking at silverback gorillas in Rwanda got a little more than they bargained for when one of the gorillas freaked out and went on a savage rampage. The tourists had been sitting calmly and watching the apes eat. Then, at some point, one of the gorillas decided it didn't really like the tourists watching it chow down. It charged at the guests and they tried to scatter, but they weren't fast enough. The giant ape managed to swipe aside two tourists and their guide, knocking them to the forest floor. Everyone else was cowering in the bushes and trying not to be noticed by this angry ape. The only thing that stopped the gorilla from bludgeoning every last tourist to death was the brave guide, who managed to get between the gorilla and the tourists and calm the beast down. The gorilla then just kind of hobbled away, sat down, and kept on eating. The tourists swiftly made their escape. To be honest, this situation could have been significantly worse. The male gorilla weighed at 420 pounds. It had such strength that it could easily have ripped off the tourists' arms and then beat them with their own appendages. After all, how would you feel if a bunch of monkeys snuck into your kitchen and watched you and your family eat while snapping pictures? Number 4. Swallowed by a Python A woman in Indonesia found herself on the wrong side of a snake's belly, and by that I mean she found herself inside the snake's belly. She'd been checking on her cornfields near the border of the jungle when she went missing. Her name was Watiba and she lived on Mana Island basically in the middle of nowhere. Her cornfield was located roughly half a mile from her home, and at the time, she hadn't been worried about being attacked by a reticulated forest python, even though they are very common in the region. People are just kind of used to these snakes. They don't generally go attacking humans. The woman was instead worried about the local boars that had been destroying her crops. Watiba never returned home from her cornfield. Her family eventually got worried and they went out looking for her. They discovered the woman's footprints, her slippers, and her machete. The next day, 100 villagers searched the area in the daylight and discovered a massive python hanging out in the jungle about 23 feet in length. The snake had a swollen belly, looking as if it had just eaten a very large meal. Hoping against hope, the villagers cut the snake open. But unfortunately, the woman they found curled and sticky inside the snake's guts was already dead. She probably hadn't died inside the snake, instead it's likely she'd been strangled to death by the snake first and then gulped into its belly. Number 3. Elephant Kidnapper In a jungle in Thailand, an elephant murdered its keeper and then kidnapped a family of tourists. The incident happened during a jungle tour in the northern city of Chiang Mai. As a bit of background, Thailand has been using elephants as major tourist attractions for years. But the practice has been coming under fire recently because elephants are so often mistreated and having people ride on their backs is actually very bad for the animals. In the middle of the jungle tour, the elephant went berserk. It attacked and killed the keeper who was riding on its neck, and then ran off into the trees, taking three tourists with it, who were sitting inside a small basket on the elephant's back. The tourists didn't know what to do. The elephant was literally on a rampage, and they were just holding on for dear life, hoping they wouldn't fall out of the basket and be trampled by the angry beast. The tourists were rescued soon enough when other elephant keepers tracked them down and calmed the animal. Apparently, the keeper had been new, and the elephant hadn't liked him. 
and that's what caused its deadly rampage. Number 2. Drunk Monkeys Speaking of violent and out-of-control animals in Thailand attacking tourists in the jungle, a pack of drunk monkeys was caught torturing a group of friends on holiday. The macaws were stealing alcohol at the secluded Yong Gassim Bay, a place only accessible via boat. Visitors here are informed that the animals are friendly, however, this day they weren't. Nobody's exactly sure how the animals got their grubby paws on booze. They probably stole it from one of the nearby bars. But regardless of how they came across the alcohol, they showed up wasted, jumping out of the jungle and attacking every tourist in sight. Video footage of the incident revealed the monkeys literally chasing a terrified woman through the sand until she eventually fell over and did a faceplant. The monkeys had to be chased off before they did horrible things to her. They continued attacking throughout the day, just being generally horrible and ruining everybody's good time. They finally went away in the night, probably when the alcohol wore off and they ran out of energy and aggression. Number 1. Hacked to Death Two guides in Papua New Guinea were attacked in the jungle while trekking with a group of tourists from Australia and New Zealand. This is one of the remotest places in the world, and the guides were taking the tourists through an even more remote jungle trail. And that was when six bandits jumped out of the jungle, brandishing machetes and spears and demanding cash. Even in the wildest and remotest jungles of the farthest corners of the earth, there are still guys with knives waiting to take your money. Luckily for the tourists, the bandits spared their lives. Instead, they turned their anger on the local guides and killed them. It's likely that the bandits wanted to send a warning to the outside world to keep foreign tourists out of their area. The best way to do this appeared to be by hacking apart the guides with machetes to scare everyone senseless. Also, one of the Australian tourists took a spear through the leg. And yeah, if someone speared me through the leg, chances are I would never visit that place again and I would tell all my friends to stay away too. The jungle trek the tourists were on spans only three days and goes through one of the most dangerous routes in the whole of Papua New Guinea. When the trek is over, there's a high probability to have some kind of infection, to be covered in leeches and to maybe even have gotten malaria from a mosquito. And now, tourists can add spear through the leg to the list of potential dangers. Two friends, James and Alex, were biking down a gravel road in the country near Anchorage, Alaska, when out of nowhere, a grizzly bear broke through the trees, grabbed a hold of James, and pulled him right off his bike. According to both men, the bear rushed about 30 yards out of its way just to grab the cyclist. James screamed for help as the bear tried to pull him off into the woods biting and clawing, trying to tear the poor guy to pieces. The whole incident only lasted about 10 seconds, and the only reason James even lived is because his friend Alex knew exactly what to do and acted quickly. James managed to pull his bear spray out, get between his friend and the angry animal, and empty the whole can of spray into that grizzly bear's face. The bear was so angry that it took off and ran back into the forest, but the ordeal wasn't over just yet. James was in serious trouble. He was bleeding profusely from his neck. His friend managed to call for help and luckily there was a nearby base. Rescuers arrived on the scene quickly and took James to the Providence, Alaska Medical Center where he made a full recovery. He now credits his friend with literally saving his life. Number 9. Rampaging Truck Driver In Arizona, one of the most shocking vehicle-on-cyclist crimes took place during the Sholo City's road race. It was about as dramatic and as horrifying as it gets. A truck driver plowed through a crowd of cyclists, critically injuring six people before just driving away. It was a hit and run, and it actually ended with the black Ford truck driver being shot by the police through his driver's side window. Two of the injured were in stable condition at the time, but the other four were listed as critical. The truck driver himself was also in stable condition after the cops took him out using force. Imagine being in a car chase and shooting through the windows. The whole ordeal was pretty intense. According to the Sholo Police Sergeant Brandon Clark, the truck veered across the road at high speed to collide with the cyclist for a reason unknown to literally everybody. There were about 50 cyclists in the lane, so it's not like he didn't see them. He most likely committed this horrendous act on purpose, though nobody has been able to say why. After all, what kind of sick motivation could a person have for plowing down innocent cyclists in the middle of a race? Number 8. Beat the Bridge a guy on a motorcycle made the wrong call in Miami. We've all tried to make the yellow light, but this guy took it a step further by trying to make the drawbridge. He ignored the warning signs and tried to race over the drawbridge before it could open. It happened at about 6 in the morning as the guy went on his morning ride from Aventura to Key Biscayne. The bridge was slowly opening over the Miami River. 
The cyclist later identified as 58-year-old Fred Medina thought he was in a Mission Impossible movie or something as he tried to fling himself and his bicycle over the widening gap. Since his name wasn't Tom Cruise, he didn't make it. He slid down the drawbridge as it opened and fell to his death. Medina's friend Stephen Tannenbaum, who spoke with WSVN, said Medina had been biking with another friend, who had crossed the bridge ahead of him. He slid down the bridge and fell in between the section of the bridge that moves and the fixed part of the roadway. According to ABC News, the Downtown Development Authority has been trying to get gates installed that would block people from attempting these kinds of dangerous stunts, but it just hasn't been done yet. But to be quite honest, it really was his own fault for ignoring the very obvious signs that the bridge was opening. Sometimes it's just better to be late for work. Number 7. Deer Crash A cyclist was going about 40 miles an hour along a rural road near Mount Lemon just outside Tucson when he crashed. But he didn't crash into the back of a car or slide into a ditch. Instead, the cyclist had a head-on collision with a wild deer. Luckily for all of us on the internet, he caught the entire thing on video thanks to his helmet camera. He smacked into that deer, flipped all the way over his handlebars, and then landed pretty well on his head. According to the cyclist himself, Reed Shonell, he was in significant pain but didn't see any reason to call an ambulance. And miraculously, he and the deer both walked away without any serious injuries. His bicycle was shattered, though, unfortunately, and he had a broken foot and a bit of a road rash. But it was probably the most dramatic cycling video that he'll ever make. So have you ever been biking down the road or even driving and had to stop for a deer? Or was it just too late? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, then be sure to hit that thumbs up and the subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. The Deadly Buzzard Yet another cyclist caught an exceptional one-of-a-kind event with his helmet camera after an unexpected encounter with a wild and deadly animal. It wasn't a bear, and it wasn't a deer, and it wasn't even something you would probably expect. 39-year-old husband and father Alex Gilbert was riding his bicycle when he felt something hit his head, and he thought he'd been whacked by a tree branch. Apparently, a giant buzzard was flying above him and had mistook the camera mounted to his helmet as some kind of snack and tried to take it away with its sharp claws. At the time of the incident, Alex didn't really know what happened. It wasn't until he got home and inspected himself that he realized he had a wound on the back of his head that looked like something had scratched him. Then, when he checked the footage from his camera, he saw the amazing close-up of the buzzard and realized it must have nicked his head with its talons. Alex figured the bird probably thought his camera was a rodent, but it was sorely mistaken. He said the buzzard shot off like a missile and added, they're such quiet and majestic things. Before I realized what had happened, it was already over. Alex's injury wasn't serious and it honestly could have been a lot worse. At least he got some great footage out of that surprising ordeal. Number 5. The Red Light In East London, a 73-year-old man was crossing the road, but he never actually made it to the other side. He was left bleeding on the crosswalk after a cyclist ran the red light and killed him. This dramatic incident has resulted in the cyclist, a 23-year-old named Ermir Loka, being accused of manslaughter. He's also being accused of furious driving, a crime most people probably didn't even know existed. According to the BBC, the cyclist was going about 15 miles per hour when he collided with the senior citizen. The older man was simply on his way home from working a long day at a hospital. The prosecutor in the case said that Ermir was cycling very hard and had overtaken other people on the road and fully intended to run straight through that red light. It wasn't even a fresh red light, it was stale, red for at least five seconds. And here's where the real horror comes in. If it had been an accident, okay, but instead of helping the old man as he bled to death, Ermir picked up his bike and cycled away. He didn't even call an ambulance or stick around to see if the guy was still breathing. The victim suffered skull damage fractures, and sadly, he died eight days later from severe brain trauma. Number 4. The Last Race Pro cyclist Robert de Grief was participating in a single-day race in the Netherlands when the unimaginable happened. This guy was only 27 years old and in peak pristine physical condition. He was also an amazing athlete and had actually placed second at the Ron van Drenth race just the previous month. It's also important to note that he had taken a heart exam recently that came back negative for any issues or abnormalities, and yet halfway through the race, Robert suffered from a heart attack. This is not something most cyclists expect to happen, especially young ones. After all, people in such great physical health normally have really strong hearts. Suffering the heart attack was only the first of Robert's problems, though. He had to be induced into a coma for 48 hours and then he spent three weeks in critical condition before eventually dying from a brain hemorrhage. 
It's not clear really what exactly happened to Robert. There was nothing obvious that could have caused such medical complications. It was just one of those freak things. Robert was pedaling away one second and the next he was on his back dying. This isn't even the very first case of a promising young cyclist having an unexpected heart attack. A 15-year-old British cyclocross champion named Charlie Craig suffered cardiac arrest in January of 2017. The doctors believe was caused by a condition known as silent ischemia, aka a lack of oxygen to the heart. This can occur during intense training via high surges of adrenaline, even for well-trained athletes. This really goes to show that even if you take care of yourself and practice a healthy and active lifestyle, you can still die of a heart attack before even hitting 30. Number 3. Kamikaze Squirrel In Chicago, a squirrel got some serious revenge on a city official. It happened after Alderman Howard Brookins gave a heated speech at city council about how the squirrels in Chicago were being too aggressive and it turned into a menace. Well, apparently those squirrels in Chicago don't like being called out, because just weeks after the alderman basically called out every single squirrel in the city, one of them got its revenge. The alderman was cycling the Calsag Trail when a squirrel dive-bombed his bicycle from a tree branch. It was a kamikaze squirrel. It wedged itself between the spokes of his bike and caused the alderman to fly over his handlebars and seriously injure himself. There hasn't been a kamikaze attack this effective since Pearl Harbor, with the alderman suffering a broken nose and a fractured skull, and having about six of his teeth knocked out of his face. He actually had to get emergency surgery, and all because he made the grave error of bad-mouthing the city's squirrels. I wonder if now he'll just leave them be, or maybe counterattack. Number 2. The Hunted In the French Alps, cycling can be a dangerous game. This is especially true during hunting season. A 24-year-old man named Lucas Cleric was recently jailed and sentenced to four years in prison for manslaughter after he accidentally shot and killed a mountain biker from Wales. Why did the hunter shoot the innocent mountain biker? Well, according to the BBC, Lucas mistook the man for a wild boar while he was biking through the French forest. In addition to being sent to jail, Lucas was also banned from hunting, banned from ever owning a weapon again, and just generally disgraced. What makes this story really shocking is that the forest in which the attack occurred is a known destination for mountain bikers. It's a popular area and people come from all over the world to bike here, and the locals know it. Plus, how does a person mistake a human on a pair of wheels for a wild boar? And why was he hunting in an area that cyclists are frequently in? These are the reasons why the hunter got such a serious sentence even though the shooting was a so-called accident. Do you think this guy really thought that biker was a wild boar? Number 1. Mauled by a Cougar in the outskirts of Seattle, a man named S.J. Brooks met an early death after going for an ordinary bike ride with his friend. They were on a remote trail near North Bend, and everything seemed completely normal. And then out of nowhere, a cougar pounced. The two cyclists got off their bikes and tried to scare the animal away. They made noise and hit the giant cat with their bicycle wheels. It was a success, and the cougar left them alone. But it came back for revenge. Just when the cyclist thought the cougar was gone for good, it made a shocking surprise attack. It first attacked Mr. Brooks's friend, sticking his whole head in its mouth. And for those who don't know, a cougar has such an incredibly strong bite force that it can, when it wants to, literally crush a human head with its powerful jaws. Mr. Brooks acted fast and distracted the animal before it could crush his friend to death, but then the cougar turned on him, while his friend ran off shouting for help. The friend eventually managed to get through to emergency services, but by the time they returned to the scene of the accident, Mr. Brooks was gone. He was found later that day, dragged into and half-eaten by the cougar. The friend of Mr. Brooks was able to survive the incident, and all because of Mr. Brooks' great sacrifice. Thanks for watching. So, what's the worst thing that's ever happened to you while cycling? Let me know in the comments. And if you've liked this video, be sure to hit subscribe and then come back again for more wild content. We'll see you next time.